Welcome to Rugby M here on Free Sports, and I'm so, so excited about today's show because not only have we got one of the greatest players in the history of Rugby League, but we've got Jimmy Johns Buchanan, the resurrection. Resurrected, my back friend. from nearly the dead, mate. Yeah, I thought I was going to die. It was terrible. The single worst illness I've had in my adult life. Honestly. I got poorly a few times as a kid, but this one, it nearly finished me off. It's like Angel Michael fighting demons, mate, for 21 days, and I've managed to come through it. I've sounded like Dennis Betts for the last three weeks, mate, and it's been a shocker. I've got my voice back, but it's been funny because I've almost been wrapped in a providential bubble. Everything yep. that I needed to get done, I got done, apart from obviously playing and training, anything physical, and but all, all, and no game, yeah. But a lot of the goals that I've had set in the first three, four, five, six weeks of this year, still managed to get it done, and I'm, I'm buzzing, mate. So, despite the adversity, it's all good. And I always say adversity is one of the key things for success. And I can't wait to speak to the legend today, a guy who I grew up legend. supporting, the icon, no, never mind legend, icon, Ellery, and to find out what it makes him tick as well. Ellery, fantastic to have you here. Thank you for coming. And it's an absolute honour to have you on the famous rugby so Are you happy to be here? Absolutely, delighted. Um, great to see you two guys and uh, to see Jamie. And... Uh, what a tremendous player has been and a servant to Rugby League. Absolutely brilliant. And you obviously played for Leeds in your career as well. And do you think they've missed him so far this year? Because two defeats so far, they could have done with him out there. Well, rugby is made up of many different um, particular parts. And one of the things that you have to have on the football paddock is that making sure that you've got a degree of experience on the football paddock. And that's one of the things what Jamie brings to the, to the, to the football uh, ground when he goes to Headingley and I'm sure that the players have missed him and his experience and his voice and everything and obviously his athleticism as well. God willing I'll be back soon um, and I wanted to ask you Hilary, one of the things that's always made me tick and motivated to get out of bed is the desire to win just want to compete and I know you still compete now in, in various different racket sports but I, I wondered when I used to watch you as a nine year old kid what was it that drove you what made you get out of bed and become one of the greatest rugby league players of all time what motivated Ellery Hanley one of the first things I thought in my life what I wanted to do is to make sure that I was physically super fit and, and fitter than anybody else it, it, it may not have meant in terms of that I was the quickest on the on the football paddock or on the on the rugby field or anything but what I knew was that I'd give maximum effort yeah. um, to whatever I was doing and that that's the first start of being strong and developing strength, not just physically, but in my mind as well. It's a great point, that, because I get a lot of young kids who are coming through the system and they're always worried about, I'm not quite big enough, I need to put a few more kgs on, I need to grow a couple more inch. You played right in the middle and you're not the biggest forward in the world. What would you say to when a young person out there who's thinking, I need to be a bit stronger and I need to be a little bit bigger? They can just make the best of what they've got, can't they? A little bit like you did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think one of the things I did, um, I was very, uh, very much a student of the game. Yeah. And, um, and the first thing I did was make sure that I didn't paper over any cracks. I understood myself and, uh, and I recognised myself in terms of my weaknesses and my strengths. And I worked on all my weaknesses um, behind the scenes, away from training. Um, a great example, I may have done a, probably for the most of my life, I've done, always done a five mile run or a six mile run every single week. And even though we did our physical training at the particular organisations, I was at Bradford and at Wigan at, and, uh, and at Leeds as well and, and overseas at Balmain and, and at West Tigers, I always made sure that base was always in there. And that, for me, is one of the most important things, having the base and having the strength. Because there is going to become a tough time through the course of the 80 minutes that you are going to have to call upon your reserves. Yes. Who, who, who signed you? So back in the day, you're young lad. What team were you playing for? Which amateur team? I was playing for a team called Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi? Yeah. Um, Who's school? Was, was it a school thing? Um, yeah, it was uh, open age side. Yeah. And, um, and I, had a, I had a coach called Terry Devaney. Um, uh, he, he's, he's passed away and everything, um, God bless him and everything. And uh, for me, he started off my career massively for me. And, um, and I think one of the things with me was that I couldn't wait to go, whatever I was doing, whether it be soccer or whether I'd be playing um, squash or whether I'd playing rugby league, I couldn't wait to get there and, and, and not just perform my skills or demonstrate my skills. Um, I, I was comfortable within my own skin, skin, just in terms of that. I knew that I could do whatever I wanted to do, just in terms of because I was fit. Yeah. Um, I, I practiced my my basic skills. Um, I understood the game, so it was it, in a way it came quite easily for me. 
Did you, did you enjoy training as much as you enjoyed playing? Absolutely. Yeah. That was the biggest part for me. Um, I enjoyed playing rugby league in the 80 minutes, but I actually enjoyed training. I couldn't wait to get to training. And uh, I enjoyed all the comradeship um, with all the players and so forth. But I liked all the challenges within, whether we were doing sprints or whether we were doing long distance running or whether, whatever we were doing, I enjoyed it. One of my favourite quotes in sport mm. is Muhammad Ali when he said, uh, a man who thinks the same at 50 as he did at 30 has wasted 20 years of his life. How do you think now compared to when you, you finished your career? Do you think there's been a difference there in your thought process of your learning after post-career? No question about it. Every day I'm learning. You know, I, I, I'm very fortunate and uh, lucky, and I never take it for granted that I'm surrounded by a wonderful team of people um, in terms of business, in terms of great, honest, trustworthy friends who I know that I can pick up the phone and I can rely on them and the job will get done. But I think it's important to have that. Um, it's, a, it's a comfort zone in knowing that, you know, if you're falling, you know that they're there for you. And yeah. um, But at the same time, I think that you've also got to have particular um, checkpoints in your life and in your career that you understand yourself and you know what you have to do. You know, it, it's just as if you're on the football paddock. You have to have a reset button, not wait for your team um, or your captain or your, your head coach to come in at half time and say to you, listen guys, we need to go back to the fundamentals and basics before we win this football game. You've got to know yourself when you're on the football paddock because you're all captains. Even though I was a captain and a leader of my side, Every side I played in, and I've been a captain or a leader of the side, or even the national side, I know that I want all my players to be a captain and understand what they have to do on the football paddock because everything what happens on the football paddock changes the course and the history of the game completely. And players have to understand that, that once again, it goes back to this, doing the basics for longer periods than your opposition. And once you do those principles correctly and for long enough periods, you have you put yourself in a great place of winning that particular game. Um, it's the way from rugby. Yeah. Um, what's your first love? Because my first love is house music. Mm. Uh, I fell in love with it, and I, just, I love it. But what's Ellie Ramley's first love? We all have different hobbies, and we yeah. all have different interests. Like I, I love chess. I love playing chess. I love I'm playing a, chess. Yes, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm a fanatical chess player. I love chess, and a, and I like to work out problems and solving problems on computers and so forth. And um, the the but. We all have our different interests and, and it's important for all of us to be different because the chemistry is built up differently in, in each yeah. and every one of us and that's what makes great human beings. I'm just thinking now of rugby league players and back in your day, yourself and Martin Fire and a couple more became almost like household names that could go on like uh, Strictly Come Dancing or Dancing on Ice and the nation had recognised you and people like uh, Eddie Hearn knew those personalities. We don't seem to have that anymore, Ellery. Why do you think that is? Why did you stand out and characters like Martin O'Fire and maybe Anderson Gill back in, back in your day? Well, I think the game's getting better, just in terms of that we're now identifying what great athlete, athletic players that we've got um, in our great sport. Um, but I think what happens in all sports, you have greatness at different periods of time, and you have different individuals who come along come come along at different times. You know, for example, you had the Henderson Gills, you had the Jason Robinsons, you had the Andy Gregorys, and you know you had the Joe Lydons, and that period of time will come again. It's just that all we have to do one we have to be patient, and we have to make sure that we nurture these pl players from grassroots level, and making sure that. We, we, we bring them up in the right direction and where we want to take those players to. And obviously, we, we want to make sure that we broadcast, that broadcast them in the best and give them the best showcase possible. I want to talk to you about adversity, Larry, because you took some hammer, awful tackles, and, and especially the one in Hull, Andy Dennett, uh, with, the, with the elbow. And we're going to go to Hull shortly, but what do you remember about overcoming that adversity and, and being targeted uh, throughout your entire career? For me, it was easy because those players who were trying to make it difficult for myself, all they did was inspire me. And, um, and I always found a way and I just waited for their weaknesses because by the time they'd burned all their energy on in terms of the abuse, the physical abuse and trying to be um, uh, uh, in, intimidating me, it, it never worked. So as I said to you earlier, round about the 18 months, two year period I'd been in the professional game, 
it all stopped. Yeah. I never heard one piece of ab abuse um, because it, they knew that it never got to me, not in the slightest. And, and I think what happens as well, you gain that respect as well. You know, I could mention so many different incidents, um, players who have tackled me and they've put the hand out and pulled me up off the ground and said, are you okay, Ellery? And to me, that's just wonderful sportsmanship. It happens more and more um, in today's game now and everything, yeah. but back then, you didn't hardly ever see that. But to me, it happened so many times um, in terms of players pulling me up from the ground and saying, are you okay? Jonesy, you've beaten a hole many a time. <sighs> Playing Have at Boulevard. And what's the difference, obviously, Boulevard to KC now? Is it still as tough as the fans still get stuck into you? Like they used you know to? what? The KC for me has got some of the best acoustics in, in Super League. Yeah. And when they start singing Old Faithful, it's it's pretty intimidating. It's, it's it's mad. It's great. It's actually a pleasure to be involved in that type of atmosphere. The Boulevard was a long time ago. I was a young kid back then. Uh, but I just remember that cage that come through when you'd be running through the cage and feet would come through the side of it and all sorts. Um, but it, it, do you know what? I'm so honoured and, and privileged to have played at places like Central Park, Wilders Pool, the Boulevard. These are the grounds that you'd have played at every week because they're so historical. They've got that history. They've got that legacy that, that's brought all through to today, mate. The, the past stewards of the game and they're the, the great grounds. Let's go over now to the KCOM Stadium and catch up with the whole fullback Jamie Shaw and his teammate. Danny Washbrook. Danny Washbrook, uh, All FC, play anywhere. Donald Trump's my name. Jamie Shaw, All FC, fullback, uh, nickname Shawley. Um, David Beckham. David Beckham. Yeah, legend. Yeah, I got David Beckham. It's a good shout, that. No, thank you all, mate. All right. Um, do you know what? I really like Michael Jackson. It's a bit my because <laughs> I really like him. I've, was that I've, for dinner, is he? Yeah, I know. I know. Is it? Can it be anybody? Can they come back from the dead? Yeah, they can come back from the dead. I'll go Michael Jackson. Really like his music. Fair play. I've never read a book in my life. I read it. I read a little in a book. Very, very hungry caterpillar. Yeah. <laughs> Probably empty dumpty the other night to my son. Um, uh, last book I read was um, Paul Cook's Judas. Yeah, it was quite a good read actually. Nerd. And I got a mention somewhere. I like that. Is that next to me? No. Yeah. Mini. Oh, yeah, Mini. Mini. Oh, yeah. We, drives, we call it the Ferrari, but it's a Volvo Estate. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what model it is, but it's gold. Oh. It's rusty. I don't know how old. How old do you reckon it is? About 15, 20 years old. Oh. Awful. Yeah, it must be 20 years. Jake Connor, he just talks about rugby constantly. Just loves rugby, doesn't he? Yeah. Just, just he doesn't talk about no else. Yeah, Jake would be bad. Who yeah. else? Tomo. No. Nah. Yeah, no, Tomo, Tomo, I reckon Tomo would do your heading after a while. He'd be, he'd, at first, it would be all laughs, but then he'd yeah. do your heading. Yeah, but Jake. <laughs> He's sat next to me. Nah. Come on, be honest. Take Tony. That's it. You got the nickname the other day. No, Danny Outen. The man with the most yeah, money. Danny Outen. He's, that's, he's, that's what happens, doesn't it? He just passes the book on someone else, though. He'll say, say Greenie than me. Yeah, but, Green, yeah, Green is a good shout, though. Greenie is tight. I'm just smart. I'm smart, mate. <laughs> Jack. Yeah, Jack. Jack Connor. Jack. For someone who's so good on the pitch, Whoa, he's an awful trainer. No, I like Don't build his ego up anymore. Yeah, sorry. No, he's rubbish. <laughs> but yeah, he's a terrible trainer. Terrible trainer. Josh Bowden. Yeah, Josh Bowden. He didn't used to be, obviously. He was one of the boys, and then he's got a missus. And he, well, his best mates were surely anyway. Nando's, left, right, and centre. Uh, yeah, Costas, see him and now well. we don't see him anymore. He's got, oh, he's got a dog as well. Since he's got a missus and a dog, that's it. Don't well, see him anymore. I've lost my best mate. Cheers, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> It was Shirley. Nah. Yeah. Nah. It was Mate, he roast me. It was, yeah, but that's it. It was Shirley, and then he started roasting him, and it fell out with him. What would you say? Yeah. Jake, Jake's always in his office. Yeah, I know, but they're always arguing, aren't they? Tag, tag, like yeah, Scott, like Scott Taylor. Yeah, Scott Taylor. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, Jake and Radders, they're like a, like a couple, like always arguing, but yeah, yeah. Tag, tag and Radders, get on. Jake again? Yeah, Jake. Jake does throw wobblers. He's got all of his way. Yeah. Or Radders. Yeah, Rad Radders. Yeah. Radders is bad. 
Niet zeker, man. Nou, zeker is niet angry. We gaan er wel eens Ja, yeah, no, but he's not angry. Oh, I don't know, because sometimes he does throw the odd threat on the pitch, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, six. Yeah, he won't get on the wrong side of the weekend. Tag players a playlist before every game. And I don't think the boys are keen on that, are they? No. It was alright for the first two years, though, because uh, we was winning. And then he changed it last year, and obviously we started losing, so everybody kicked off. Uh, <laughs> Minicello. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. Even eat, he, he doesn't eat the food at training that we get provided. Yeah, he had to, had to make it himself. Snob, so he brings his own. Yeah. He brings his own pan, his own frying pan, brings that in and cooks his own organic meal. Griff don't mind it. Griff don't mind a bit of social media. Instagram story here and there. So young lads, Hakeem, Hakeem loves yeah, it. Yeah, Hakeem. Hakeem loves his centre of attention. Yeah. Yeah. Puts his dinner on. Puts his dinner on every day, doesn't he? Pizzas. Pizzas, cheese strings. You said yesterday cheese strings. <laughs> He's mad. Cheese, cheese strings. Mad. He's bam, yeah. He's convinced Tag to sell him a car, telling him that he's passed his driving test. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> I, don't yeah, know, just, I don't know whether I'd believe it. He's dropped him in it there, then. Right, <laughs> <laughs> so... <no. laughs> Jamie Shaw uh, is doing a bit on the field at the moment and he's having a bit of a dig there, a few of the boys. Yeah, he's playing well as well. He was, he's been outstanding last weekend. And uh, I've always said to me, he's an out-and-out -out fullback, and I've had to defend him at dummy half when you stood there at market and he's so rapid, he's so dangerous. I'd love to see him play a little bit more international. I know he got his debut uh, against France back end of last year, but he's a great player, isn't he, Ellery? Um, he's electric and uh, he's a competitor. And... Um, and one of the greatest assets he's got is his speed. Yeah. And his vision's brilliant. His, uh, his placement at full-back is fantastic. He's very rarely out of position. And that's, the, that's the particular things I look for, where people are positionally put themselves in that particular um, position at full-back. But his all-round game is brilliant, fantastic. Do you think this is the, the, going to be one of the tightest Super Leagues? Because it seems to me that every team has improved this year. Well, I th I, I, I'd like to hope it is going to be, yeah. and um, because I think, as a spectator, you want to go, you want to go to a game, and you want to think to yourself, it's going to be tight, it's going to be intense, and uh, you want to get value for money, um, and having that intensity and having that rival rivalry between two teams. I don't want to see games what are blow, blown out by fifty and sixty points. I want, I want a nice tight game, and I want a conservative game in terms of the scoreline. Um, you know, I, I prefer scorelines of 14-6 and 12-8 and, and so forth. And Because I still think you can have, in between that, you can have a lot of entertainment and a lot yeah. of enjoyment as well. Yeah, you, you want to see the discipline as well as the flair. 100% is important to me. Love it, mate, love it. Right, <laughs> quick fire, Ellery, on the questions. Yep. So, if you weren't a rugby player, what would you have been? Tennis player. Tennis player. Who's your favourite tennis player? Um, probably um, Rafael Nadal. Class. One big arm. It's console and a mirror. <laughs> Um, wow. if, if, if you if you could have dinner with uh, two people dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, the first one would be my brother who died some years ago. He only got six years of life, and the second person would be my mother. Outstanding, man. Really? Class. Uh, Favorite all-time movie? Um, probably uh, Shawshank Redemption. Nice. I'm going to ask you a bit of a selfish question. Everybody will be going mad, no, oh, it's a Leeds question. Yeah. But um, I grew up being a Leeds fan. And yourself and Gary Schofield remind me a little bit of Kevin Sinfield and Jamie Peacock, two almost in well, international captains, world-class players. And you're big leaders within the team. You and Scoey, from what I know of Scoey, are quite contrasting characters. How did you get on and how did that dynamic work in your prime at, at Leeds? Well, first of all, let me just tell you, um, in regards to Gary Schofield, for me, he's um, been a great asset to our game. Um, he's been a great ambassador. And what he's done on the football paddock um, for his international sides and his, and his club side at Leeds and Hull has been phenomenal. Um, I, got on him, I got on with him fantastic and in terms of being on the football paddock. He delivered what I wanted him to do. Look, we're all not going to have a great game um, every single day uh, uh, you know, of each each week but for me um, for the vast majority of time he always put in and that's what's important to me yeah in Australia you've gone to Australia and 
we've seen some some amazing footage from over there. What was it like playing in Australia compared to playing in England? Um, the first thing I recognise when I, I and it's the, it's the same now. If I go into an organisation now, but one of the first, the first things I recognised when I went to Australia was that there's one thing that when I went to training it was that when I first landed there, I went to Balmain Tigers and uh, my first season there. I knew that the first thing I was going to do is make sure that I won every single battle in terms of training uh, on the football paddock. I was made sure that I was always early. I'm never late for anybody anyway in life. Um, but I would always make sure that I was there and that every single competition at training and made sure that I had an understanding of all the players. I'd already looked at all the footage of all the players before I even got to Australia, understood all their strengths and their weaknesses and where we could strengthen as a team, as a whole organisation completely. But for me, the pace of the game was different and I enjoyed that because my intensity and my um, determination and my concentration was good enough right there and then at that particular time to be able to handle that and that suited me and for me to play over there one it was a privilege but I enjoyed it because I was in an environment of a competition what was tough physically it was challenging all the time there was no easy games whatsoever and it brought the best out of you and I enjoyed that and and I must say this um, one of the things that I would like to say about Australia is that even now to this day I feel so honoured going back there because the love and the and um, when you go to any of the grounds and so forth, what the show is fantastic. You get real adulation there, without a doubt. I, I'm, mm. Everyone I speak to over there mm. just speaks so highly of you. There's a theme developing here, Ellery, in my own mind, and um, it comes around this gratification that I can tell that you had from from competing and winning and studying and getting those endorphins and dopamine in your brain that give you that excitement every time you achieved your goals. When you retired, how did you fill that gap yeah. and what do you do now to sort of fill that hole? Well, first of all, um, I wanted to make sure that when I, um, and, and, and I'd like to make sure that the, um, other players understand this as well. There is life after the rugby league and you have to, you have to, you have to fill that void. Yeah. And one of the things I, I did, one, first of all, I, 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 I came away from the game um, in a condition that I had all my faculties about me. I came out of the game with hardly any injuries at all um, and one of my greatest loves has always been squash and I transferred over to, to racquetball and tennis and so forth but also then I think that you've got to have hobbies as well like I, I, I taught myself to play the piano and everything yeah. and, um, and and, and other, other hobbies I have as I said to you just in terms of um, I love going into organisations, speaking to individuals, players collectively as well, because the game's given me everything and I owe it back to the game, you know, and uh, to me, it's never a hassle speaking to anybody, um, whether it's a young player coming up or whether it's a senior player. I've enjoyed every moment of my career. Outstanding. We're going to get into part two. We've got loads still to come. We're going okay. to talk Man of Steel. We're going to talk... Obviously, Wagger is back in the show. He's, the, the public have been crying out for him, <laughs> and, and, and he's going to deliver today without a doubt. Uh, to finish off, it's time for you to win. And you can be winning big today thanks to Rugby M and Bachelors at Mushy Peas. Check out the website www.rugbyam.co.uk. Fill in the form, attend the competition, check it out, and we'll see you right here. Free Sports for more in part two with this man, Elliot Hanley, and the main man, JJB. Two superstars of the game join us down here for a bit of fun. Tommy, we're gonna have a go now at the Bachelor's Mushy Peas Challenge. But how do you like your mushy peas? Um, on my pie on bonfire night, that's the go-to. Every year you've got to have it on bonfire night. And uh, your mushy peas, how do you prefer your mushy peas? Uh, straight on a pie, mate, or, or a Yorkshire pudding in custard. <laughs> you heard it here first. Right, we're gonna do England versus Australia. Let's see it. How these boys get on the Bachelor's Mushy Pea Challenge.
This season, we're really proud to be renewing our partnership with Baxlers Mushrooms, bringing you the biggest competitions in rugby league. And to kick it off, you can win one of these signed balls. But not only that, it's the ultimate season ticket. You could also hopefully be seeing one of these guys in the grand final, two tickets to the grand final, maybe a Challenge Cup final, two tickets to that, and obviously the big one at Anfield. It's Magic Weekend, two tickets to that. The full season ticket, all you've got to do is fill in the form below. Thanks to Bachelors Mushy Peas.